This is Calvary Phase 2 with Lou Frey. Today I want to come to you with a message that only God could give me. Ah, oh, I, I hate it that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always about the climate that we are in. We are not in a good space in the world. And I had one idea about what I was going to speak to you about this week, but God brought me here. And the, the word that he gave me was, why are we divided when Christ is our connector? Why are we divided when Christ is our connector? Ah. We're in a tough space. The news? Oh, I don't know where to start. I don't want to regurgitate everything that's happened in the news the past few days, but one thing we all know, an election is coming up. We know that we have a continuing pandemic known as the coronavirus. We know that thousands and thousands of lives have been lost. We know that we are in a time where we've lost faith in leadership, whether it be political leadership or the leadership in our churches. There's just an overwhelming oh, sigh there's depression, there's job loss, there is just so much. We are in that place where it's, it's, it's just like, God, we, we can't take much more. But in the midst of everything that's going on, there is one, one unfortunate thing and that's the divisiveness. The divisiveness across our country, between parties, Republican, Democrat. Divisiveness in our families, divisiveness within our jobs, the church. And I hear God so clearly now saying, and it's, it's just because, I, as you notice on social media, I do not get into the fray of the political banter back and forth because really where God has me at now, it's not on a Republican side, it's not on the Democrat side. I just wanna be right with God, and, and I'm so serious. I, I just want to hear what is God seeing right now? And what I'm hearing right now is neither Republican nor Democrat. That doesn't mean we don't need to go out and vote. But I urge you, let's get out, let's vote, let's do our due diligence. But do not, as Christians, get so caught up into party affiliation that you lose sight of who you're connected to. And that is unfortunately what we are seeing across the land. Devout Christians, leaders, well-known leaders in the body of Christ, people within the local body of Christ, getting into the ring, battling it out over the, the Republicans, what they did, what the president did, what he didn't do, and, and whether we should be praying for the president or whether we shouldn't. That's just an example. But we got to come back center. And that's what I'm hearing God say at this time. And so the, it goes back to the question, why are we divided? Why are we divided? If we're all one body in the kingdom and we're all connected through Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ, why are we divided? Shouldn't we be saying the same thing? Shouldn't we all be moving in unison in the right direction? And I think our posture, not I think, I know 
our posture at this time is to pray. Because I haven't seen anyone who has an answer that's better than prayer at this juncture. If you're looking for the answer on the Republican side, I doubt you'll find it. If you're looking for the answer on the Democratic side, I doubt you'll find it. I challenge you to tell me that you found it on either side where it's in alignment with the Word of God. See, that that's where you have to go. So let's be careful in this season as we're approaching the election and we're getting into the argument, into the banter back and forth and step back and say, what is God saying in this hour? And all I'm hearing is prayer and connecting back to the source. And if we connect back to the source, our language is going to change. Some of the things that we're posting on Facebook, we're not going to post because it is not in alignment with Christ. Why are we divided? Why are we divided? Why is there so much infighting? We expect the outward fighting from people outside the body, but why is there so much inward fighting if we're all connected to the same source? I have to go to 1 Corinthians. First 1 Corinthians, first chapter, and we'll start at the fourth verse. I thank God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, and that you were enriched in everything by him, in all utterance and all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day, somebody say blameless, in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. I got to read that again. That you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared, somebody say it has been declared, to me concerning you, my brethren, my those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you say, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, or oh, I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? <laughs> Verse 13, was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Now I, I gotta go back to verse 10 because we, we're gonna pull some things from verse 10. Now I plead with you brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. Why are we divided? <laughs> Why are we divided if we're connected through Christ? Now, I'm, I'm going to break this down a little bit. Now, Paul here, where we just read, here in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 4 through 13, he's received some disturbing news that there is division in the church of God in Corinth. There's drama in the pews. Huh, you know a little about that drama. He pens this letter in an attempt to address the factions that are going on to remind them of God's plan for the church. 
Remember, God has a plan for the church. And he sets the stage first by thanking God for them, arguing that they come into the full revelation of who they are as children of God who should lack nothing. Somebody say lack nothing. Paul pled that they reach common ground and there be no divisions among you that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. Paul is basically saying here, do you know who you are? In this climate that we're living in right now, do you know who you are? Do you know who you're connected to? Why then are we divided when the Spirit of God binds us together? Division is no stranger in our current climate. What is the word, what is this word saying to us? I think it's so timely. I understand why God shifted my direction for the message this week. Because we can't be divided. If ever there was a time for us to stand together, it is now as Christians. We cannot be divided. We need to be posturing the body of Christ, posturing people for the times to come. It's no secret. Times are not getting better. So we're not, <laughs> we're not making it better by being divided. We've got to come together through our common connector, which is Jesus Christ. Why can't we all just get along? Hmm. Why can't we all just get along here in 2020? We have racial unrest. Are we helping the situation or are we fueling it? Again, we should not be divided within the body of Christ. We should take a stand in a Christ-like manner. And if we don't have the answers, then we need to go to the Father in unison. We need to come together. Maybe we say, you know what? I don't agree with your approach. I don't agree with your approach. But we need to come together and pray. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to do whatever we need to do because we have to come together. The scripture declares that we are united. We are to present a united front to the world. What kind of front are we presenting right now? If you scroll your Facebook feed and look at what you've been putting out on social media, what type of front are we putting out to the world as Christians? Leading into this election, a critical election, what type of front are we putting forth? Is it a front that suggests we are bonded, we're taped together, we're wrapped together through Jesus Christ? Or is it division that Paul was speaking to, to that he was addressing here at the church? There's division in our families, unresolved. But if Christ is at the center, we should not have division. As I pointed out in my last message, one day Jesus is coming back looking for a church. Now, we're not talking about a building. We're talking about a church, a people, a unit of people who are not divided. Without a spot or wrinkle, there are no dividing lines in heaven. A songwriter once wrote said, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. We have Baptists here, Catholic, Pentecostal, Methodist, AME, Apostolic, non-denomination, but we must get on one accord if we say that the common denominator between all of us is Christ. Where is Christ? Why are we divided if Christ is our connector? There's something that separates us. Is it the enemy? Are we allowing our flesh to take over? What do you mean? Oftentimes we will say, oh, the Lord said this. God, careful. Did the Lord say it? Or is it something you really had on your chest that you wanted to say, but you're putting it off as, oh, the Lord said it. The Lord spoke to me. Careful. 
We have a lot of that in this hour right now. Many people proclaiming to speak on behalf, unauthorized, on behalf of God. God said this, but God's not saying any of it, but it was really what was in your heart. So now you got to check your heart. Where's your heart? So again, if Christ is the common denominator that's connecting us all, we should all be speaking in unison. We should be saying the same thing. But we're not. Where's the love? We're so focused on politics right now this party over that party but if you really do your homework i think some of us would be open up for a rude awakening you know we were throwing the bible out and and um in support of one party over the other but help me somebody help me please comment show me the bible in either party so I don't want to get into politics because I don't want to be guilty of the very thing that I am preaching about, teaching about today. I want to be in alignment with Christ. I want to be in the posture that Christ, that God requires me to be in this hour. I don't want to be divided. I don't want to be over here. I don't want to be over there. I just want to stay center. And that is the message to us, to everyone today careful in this season careful that you are not fueling division careful that your words careful that your actions are God's actions they are Christ centered actions and not politically infused actions why are we divided why are we divided. In verse 12, going back, when Paul asked, is Christ divided? Well, we know Christ is not divided. <laughs> I'm asking you today, is Christ divided? So if we are in Christ, we are the body of Christ. If Christ is not divided, we're not supposed to be divided. So if we are divided, then that suggests that we are in something that is not of Christ. And we are outside of the will of God. Ooh. <laughs> Do I need to say that again? If we are a part of the body of Christ, Christ is the connector that connects us all. And the question that Paul is asking, is Christ divided? Christ is not divided. So if we who proclaim to be a part, notice I said proclaim, to be a part of the body of Christ, if we're divided, hmm, then we are outside of the will of God. Whew, this is heavy. Look. Don't blame me for this. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I said, okay, God, this was not the message that, that I had, but, but now I understand why God has been dealing with me so, and I've just been so troubled about what I'm seeing across the digital landscape, what I'm seeing just across the world and on social media and how we as the body of Christ or how we're responding to the thing. The, the world is looking at us. We have to have a different posture. We must respond differently. We must respond as a member of the body of Christ. Our language cannot be the same as the world. We are in the world, but we're not of it in the world but we're not of it so our response cannot be the same as the world our response cannot be based upon that first thing that pops up in your flesh in your mind we must pray and ask God God how do you want us to respond the answer is not going silent 
That is not at all what God is saying. We must be vigilant. We must take a stand, but we have to do it God's way. And we, as the body of Christ, cannot look and respond with hate like everyone else. If the Bible says to pray for our leaders, it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with their politics. You have to pray for them. Whew. I know that's not going over well. Okay, I'm going to say it again. If the Bible says to pray for your leaders, we have an obligation to pray, whether we agree or disagree with their politics. Ouch. So the answer, going back to the question that Paul is asking, is Christ divided? No. Well, if Christ dwells in us and we continue daily operating in division, then we're marching to the wrong beat. We're marching to the beat of the enemy as long as we remain separate. And it's critical in the scripture that Paul led off in verse 5 indicating that he desired that the church body be enriched in everything. And he went on to say that you come short in no gift. Many of us, not seeing you, us, we might be coming short today and we don't know why. You've closed yourself off from God. God has been trying to deal with you over the divisiveness and the things that are in your heart that, that are in our hearts that should not be there. So when, when we go back to this message, why are we divided when Jesus Christ is our connector? Going back to the why, it could mean, likely means there's some unresolved things in our heart that we need God to address. You know, in Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren, that means all of us, to dwell together in unity. Isaiah 1, 18 issues the plea, Come now and let us reason together. You know, if we're going to quote scripture, let's, let's quote. Here's what we need to quote. Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Let's come to an understanding. And, and, and <laughs> we're getting to that part where we're talking about those things that are in our hearts. And it's actually sin. And he said, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. In other words, whatever is in us that's unresolved, that causes us to respond in an ungodly way, God is just standing there. Just surrender to him and say, God, just clean me up. Clean me up. God, if there's something in me that's not like you, that doesn't reflect your, the best, God's best. God, clean it up. Take it out of me. It's as simple as that. It's not difficult. I don't know who told you it was so difficult and that, that being a child of God was so hard and, you know, oh, well, I'm, I'm so damaged. And there's no such thing as being so damaged. There's, well, my thoughts are so corrupt. We've all been there. Even, well, some, well I, I, I got saved. I gave my life to Christ, but then I kind of God is standing right there. God hasn't gone anywhere. God just wants your heart so that we can stand firm as the body of Christ and respond during this calamity, during these times. God needs us in, oh my, God needs us to be ready. God needs us standing at the ready in unison. He doesn't need us in in, in, in separate silos and, and responding in anger and responding in our flesh. We need as leaders, no matter what level you are, in or out of the body of Christ, God is saying, just come to me. Just come to me. 
come, come with all of it, all of you who are heavy laden. I know you're dealing with depression. I know you're dealing with job loss. I know you're dealing with drama in your family. I know you're dealing with drug use. I know you have an alcohol problem. I know you have anger issues. God is saying, just come, just come. Lay all of that at the altar. I am here. Release all of that because I need you. I need you at your best. I need you to represent me well. Are we representing God well? This this message is not for the person who's not in Christ or the person who has been in church for a long time and maybe you fell on the waist. It's for everyone. It's for all of us. Why? <laughs> Why are we divided when Jesus Christ is our connector? And I say our all encompassing because Jesus Christ died for all of us. Ugh. He did not leave any of us out. <laughs> he didn't leave any of us out. So <laughs> we have a right, all, no one's excluded. No one is excluded. So let's just come. Let's come together. Let's resolve whatever's in our hearts that's allowing us to spit venom, to just put fuel on the fire in this climate. God needs us to come together as one, as one body. Come together in unity. I pray that this message has blessed you today. I know it's blessed me. I'm about to get worked up here. <laughs> I love it when the Holy Spirit steps in and he has a word. This word is for you. It's for me. No longer divided. We're not going to be divided anymore. We're going to say what God wants us to say. We're going to do what God wants us to do. We're going to be praying harder than we've ever prayed before going into this election. We, we, we need to pray for revival. Revival across the entire world. God, you know what you should be praying? You should be praying for fulfillment. That's the word that just came to me. Fulfillment. Everything in you that's been laying dormant, that's been hindering you from fulfilling the will of God. Whew. I pray right now that God breathes on it. I pray that you open yourself up for God to do what only he can do. You are needed in this hour. You cannot allow the enemy to continue to dictate what comes out of your mouth and through your actions. I know it's easy to jump on bandwagons, but before you jump on a bandwagon, make sure it's God's bandwagon. And I'm not advocating pro or against anything. I want to be on God's side, pure and simple. And I would think that that's where we all want to be. It's not Republican. It's not Democrat. What is God saying in this hour? But that word keeps coming back to me. Fulfillment. I pray fulfillment over your life right now. That you will stand up and be who God has called you to be. You, <laughs> you will walk in your identity. Your true identity that was declared in, I, in, in Jeremiah when, before you were even formed in your mother's womb, that you will walk in your true identity. And when you walk in your true identity, when, you, when, when God's will is fulfilled in your life, you will not walk a different path than what God designed for your life. That this, this message is for someone out there who might be 50, you might be 60, whatever age you are. Fulfillment, fulfillment so that you're no longer divided, 
There's no more confusion. You're not pulled this way, pulled that way. That's not the will of God. He said, my yoke is easy. Just come. Let's not make this difficult going into the, le the election. It's time to pray. Pure and simple. It's time to pray. It's time for the body of Christ to stand up and be all that God has called and destined us to be. Well, I pray again that this has blessed you. I was signing off earlier, but then Holy Spirit just came <laughs> again. But I thank you for this time. Let's not be divided. Let's truly be connected to Christ. Amen.